Welcome. Uh, today we're going to look at solving trigonometric equations. This is chapter 5.3 in your book. So let's go ahead and get our notes out and we'll get going. Remember during the video, uh, if you're falling behind your notes, to pause it to get your notes caught back up. Or if you didn't quite understand something the first time, go ahead and stop the video, rewind it, and listen to that part again. Sometimes it takes a couple times through to get the concept. Okay, let's begin. Our objective for this video is students will solve trig equations with one trig function using inverse properties. Okay, let's go ahead and write example three down in our series. This is entitled Extracting Square Roots. It says solve three times tangent squared x minus one is equal to zero. Now the first thing I notice is my tangent is squared. This is our first experience in our series with an equation that is squared, or a quadratic. However, because there's no linear term, we can still solve this by inverse properties. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember, our goal is to isolate the trig function. So I have 3 times tangent squared x minus 1 equal to 0. So the first thing I want to do is add 1 to both sides. So we're going through just using our inverse properties to solve or isolate tangent squared x. That leaves me 3 tangent squared x. The 1's go away. Equal sign comes straight down. And it's equal to 1. I'm next going to divide both sides by 3. And that leaves me tangent squared x is equal to 1 over 3. 3. Okay, to isolate the trig function, we now need to square root both sides to take care of the squared. So that's the square root of tangent squared x is equal to. Now remember, when we're solving by square rooting both sides, we absolutely must put the plus and minus. We have the positive root and the negative root to worry about. And this would be the square root of 1 third. Now we can see the square root of tangent squared would be tan x is equal to plus or minus the square root of the numerator, which is 1, is simply 1. The square root of the denominator would be the square root of 3. Now normally we would rationalize from here, but in terms of trying to find the angle in which I take the tangent of, I get 1 over the square root of 3. I'm not going to rationalize. It's going to be easier to figure out if we don't rationalize. Okay, in order to find the angle, we're going to have to rewrite tangent in terms of sine and cosine. Tangent can be written as sine x divided by cosine x, and that's equal to plus or minus 1 over the square root of 3. Now, we're going to need our unit circle, so if you don't have it out, go ahead and pause the video, get it out, and then unpause it. Okay, um, to find our angle, the first thing I have to look at is my coordinates. I'm looking for a coordinate that has the square root of 3 on it. And I notice on my unit circle that my pi over 6 angles are the square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. And my pi over 3 angles are 1 half and the square root of 3 over 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a set and divide them and see which one gives me my answer. Now, the fact that my square root of 3 is in the denominator, I think I'm going to choose 1 half and the square root of 3 over 2. I'm going to choose the pi over 3 angle. So let's take a look and see how that works out. We have 1 half and the square root, divided by the square root of 3 over 2, which is equal to 1 half. And if we multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2 over the square root of 3, now that puts our square root of 3 in the denominator as well which is what we want. You can see the 2's cancel out, and I'm left with 1 over the square root of 3. So this angle, or the pi over 3's, are the angles we are looking for. Now that we have determined that our the angles needed will be our pi over 3's, we have to remember our answers are looking for both positive and negative solutions. So we're going to identify which angles give us positive solutions and which angles give us negative solutions. So starting in quadrant 1, we can see that both x and y are positive, 
and when we divide them we'll end up with a positive so there's one positive solution in quadrant two we can see both not both but one our sorry our cosine is negative our sine is positive so that will yield a negative answer in quadrant three we can see that both sine and cosine are negative and a negative divided by a negative is a positive so that will give us a positive answer and in quadrant four we can see that our cosine is positive our sine is negative so when we divide them we'll get a negative answer so it looks like our positive answers will be one found in quadrants one and three those angles and the angles in quadrants two and four will be our negative answers threes all right now it's all all that's left is to write our solutions out i notice there's no specified interval so i need all infinity solutions and i have to realize that tangent has a period of pi and not two pi like we saw with sine cosine secant and cosecant all right, so in order to write our general solution, we're going to start with the angles we found. So I'll start with the first positive angle in quadrant 1, which was pi over 3. Then we went to quadrant 2, which gave us a negative solution, so that angle was 2 pi over 3. Then we went to quadrant 3, which gave us a positive solution, and that was 4 pi over 3. Then we went to quadrant 4, which gave us a negative solution, which was 5 pi over 3. So these are all the solutions that give me, or all the solutions, one revolution around the unit circle. We have two positives and two negatives. Okay, to write the general solution, we're taking into account that our period was pi, so I'm going to add not 2 pi this time, but just pi. So pi in to each of these. Now these represent our general solution. The bottom two answers are actually in a different period. And I can show you that right now. So the bottom two answers are already incorporated with our top two. So if I take pi over 3, if I take pi over 3 and add pi to it, now I know how to find a common denominator. I simply, or it's going to be 3, pi over 3, and I add those together, I'm going to get 4 pi over 3. So by adding 1 pi to pi over 3, I get 4 pi over 3. So I don't need to write a solution for him because he's incorporated in the first solution. And the same thing can be said for the second solution. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and write them down, and we'll talk about them in class. Thank you.